While we were ringing in the new year with fireworks and champagne, the sun was putting on its own show by unleashing an X5 Zero Solar Flare from Sunspot Region 3536. This was the biggest flare we have seen since the 10th of September 2017 when an X8 2 flare rocked the solar system. The flare also sent a coronal mass ejection, or CME, hurtling towards Earth, which was expected to arrive around January 2nd. This means we could see some amazing auroras, or northern and southern lights, in the night sky. So, grab your camera and binoculars and get ready to witness the sun's spectacular display of power and beauty. As you might know from our previous videos, a solar flare is a burst of intense radiation and plasma from the sun's surface, caused by the sudden release of magnetic energy. Plasma is a hot gas of charged particles, such as electrons and protons. The radiation from the flare can reach Earth in minutes, while the plasma can take hours or days to travel through space. Both, the radiation and the plasma can affect Earth in various ways. However, we measure the intensity of the solar flare by its peak X-ray flux, which is the amount of X-rays emitted by the sun. We use a scale that ranges from A, B, C, M to X, with X being the most powerful. The number after the letter indicates the strength of the flare within that class. For example, an X2 flare is twice as powerful as an X1 flare, and an X5 flare is five times as powerful as an X1 flare. Now that we know what a solar flare is and how we measure it, let's talk about the event that happened on December 31st, 2023. The solar flare occurred from sunspot region 3536, which is a dark spot on the sun's surface where intense magnetic fields are concentrated. It erupted at 2155 UTC and lasted for about 10 minutes. It released a huge amount of radiation and plasma, which we can see in this image captured by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. The flare also launched a coronal mass ejection, which is a large cloud of plasma and magnetic fields that travels through space. The coronal mass ejection was expected to reach Earth on January 2nd, 2024, and cause a minor geomagnetic storm. This means that the coronal mass ejection could interact with Earth's magnetic field and cause some disturbances in our magnetosphere, which is the region of space around Earth that is influenced by our magnetic field. We will talk more about the effects of the geomagnetic storm in the next section. So, we know what happened, but why did it happen? What causes the sun to produce such powerful flares? The answer lies in the sun's magnetic fields, which are constantly changing and twisting, creating a lot of tension and stress. Sometimes, the magnetic fields break and reconnect, releasing a huge amount of energy in the form of a solar flare. This process is called magnetic reconnection, and it is one of the most important phenomena in plasma physics. It can also occur in other places in the universe, such as in the Earth's magnetosphere, in the interplanetary medium, and in other stars and galaxies. The sun's magnetic fields are also related to the sun's activity cycle, which is the 11-year cycle of the sun's activity, which affects the number and size of sunspots and solar flares. We are currently in solar cycle 25, which started in 2019 and is expected to peak in 2025. The solar flare on December 31st, 2023, was the strongest one of this cycle so far, and it was also the strongest one since September 10th, 2017, when an X8-2 flare occurred. This flare was also accompanied by a coronal mass ejection, which caused a severe geomagnetic storm and auroras that were visible as far south as Spain and Italy. The sun's activity cycle is not perfectly regular, and it can vary in length and intensity. Scientists are still trying to understand the exact mechanisms that drive the cycle and how it affects the Earth and the solar system. It is also influenced by other factors, such as the sun's rotation, the sun's magnetic polarity, and the sun's internal dynamics. The sun is a fascinating and dynamic star that has a lot of secrets to reveal. Now, let's see the effects and implications of this solar flare and what it means for us. How does it affect Earth and its inhabitants? Well, the answer depends on the intensity and direction of the flare and how well prepared we are to deal with it. 
The radiation from the flare can disrupt radio communications, damage satellites, and increase the risk of radiation exposure for astronauts and air travelers. The coronal mass ejection also can cause a geomagnetic storm, which can have both positive and negative effects. On the positive side, a geomagnetic storm can produce beautiful auroras, or northern and southern lights, which are visible in the night sky near the polar regions. They are caused by the interaction of the solar wind and the coronal mass ejection with the Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere. The charged particles from the sun collide with the atoms and molecules in the upper atmosphere, causing them to emit light of different colors. The colors depend on the type and altitude of the atoms and molecules. For example, green auroras are caused by oxygen at about 100 kilometers, while red auroras are caused by oxygen at higher altitudes. Auroras are not only beautiful, but also useful, as they can help us study the Earth's magnetic field and the solar wind. On the negative side, a geomagnetic storm can cause power outages, damage to pipelines, and navigation errors. It can induce electric currents in long conductors, such as power lines, pipelines, and railway tracks. These currents can overload and damage the transformers and other equipment, leading to blackouts and fires. It can also affect the accuracy and availability of the Global Positioning System, or GPS, which relies on the signals from the satellites. Geomagnetic storm can distort the signals and cause errors in the location and timing information. This can affect many applications that depend on GPS, such as aviation, navigation, agriculture, and banking. The effects of a geomagnetic storm can vary depending on the location, the season, and the time of the day. For example, the effects are usually stronger at higher latitudes, where the Earth's magnetic field is weaker. They are also stronger during the night, when the Earth's ionosphere, which is the layer of the atmosphere that reflects radio waves, is thinner. They are also stronger during the winter, when the ionosphere is more disturbed by the solar wind. The effects of a geomagnetic storm can also be mitigated by taking some precautions and measures, such as monitoring the space weather, protecting the critical infrastructure, and informing the public. There are several agencies and organizations that monitor the space weather and issue alerts and warnings, such as the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, in the United States, and the European Space Agency, or ESA, in Europe. In conclusion, the Sun blasted out a major X5 zero solar flare on December 31st, 2023, the strongest one since 2017. This was a remarkable event that showed the Sun's power and activity, and it also had some effects on Earth. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And don't forget to check out our other videos on astronomy and space. See you next time.